Hello friends. Often you'll find that you need to use the same effects with the same settings in open tunes for more than one part of your drawing. So let me show you five different ways that'll help. And I show these tips using the scene from last week's video where I showed how to add this cartoon network style outline around your characters. So with the effect turned on, you can see that Mandy and Grimm both have this thicker outline around them and I'll show you how to add it to Billy too. Number one. So here we are in the animation room and you can see we've got the FX schematic here at the right hand side. And firstly, you can just add the same effect for your new column by right clicking on the column and then choosing insert effects. And then from the tunes level, we'll choose outline. And then you can double click on it and edit the settings to match the other nodes. So we can change the thickness down to around seven. So they all have the same kind of thickness. And I know you knew how to do that already. So the tip on share here is that if you haven't locked your room panes from the Windows menu inside the Workspace section, so if this is unticked, then you can dock the Effect Settings panel into your room to make it easier to change the effect parameters. So just double click on the effect to bring up the Settings window, and then click and drag until you see a red line between the two windows you want to dock in between. And when you release, that'll remain docked in there. And now you can single click between two of your nodes so you can see the difference in the settings to be able to set them to be exactly the same, which makes editing settings much quicker. Number two. And the second way is to use copy and paste, but it doesn't quite work as you might expect. So select the node you want to copy. That's one of these outline effects nodes. Press Control C to copy it. And then you have to click on the background to deselect all of the nodes. And then you can press Control V to paste that new node. And that'll now have the same settings as the previous node. But this is currently sitting unconnected to a column. So then you can either drag the connecting points from the column node into the effect, and then from the effect into the X sheet and delete the line that connects the column directly to the X sheet so it only goes through the effect and now that effect is applied onto that column. Alternatively, if I remove these connecting lines by clicking and dragging to highlight them and pressing delete and the same for the second one and then connect the column directly into the X sheet I can now hold the Alt key on my keyboard and drag the effect node over the line and when it's about halfway over the line, it'll connect directly between the node and the X sheet, which is a great time saver. And you can also hold Alt again to drag and remove that node away from that connection. So hold Alt to drag it in and then Alt to drag it out. And when you do, you see the effect applied or taken away from the viewer. But using copy and paste still only creates two effects that happen to have the same settings right now at the point of pasting. If you change the settings for one of the effects, it doesn't change the other. So if I reconnect the outline into Billy's column and then make that a thicker line, you'll see it only affects Billy's column. It doesn't affect Mandy's where I copied the effect from. To have the effect linked, you'll need tip number three. Number three. So this tip is about having effects that are linked to each other. So first I've got my effect here on Mandy. And if you right click on the effect node and instead of copying, choose create linked FX. And this creates another effect node, but connected to the original one with a yellow line. And with the preview option already turned on, you'll see that as I connect this node into the Billy column, as I showed you earlier by holding the Alt key, as soon as it's connected, the effect is applied and Billy now has a thicker line. The same thickness as Mandy because these effects are actually linked. But now if I change the thickness of one of the effects by selecting it and then increasing the thickness in the options, you'll see that thickness is applied to both effects and to both columns. And one last thing about the linked effects, you can create as many as you need. So just keep right clicking and choosing create linked effect and then connect it to any of the columns that need to share that same effect 
and the same settings. But this can make your schematic quite messy as you can see already. But to help that, I've got tip number four. Number four. So this tip is about grouping columns together so that you can apply a single effect to all of them. And there's quite a few ways to do it, but let me just show you one of them. So if I delete the effect from Billy here, and disconnect the effect from Mandy by holding Alt and dragging the effect out. And then I delete the effect from Grim. So all three columns for Billy, Mandy and Grim are connected directly to the X sheet. So there's no thickness applied to those columns. I've got the outline effect off to one side here. We'll use that in a minute. And now if I use a new effect from the layer blending section, so I'll choose add effect, layer blending, and I'll choose the over effect here. But for this case, it could be quite a few of them for what I'm trying to achieve. So you might want to try out some of these effects to see what they do, especially if your drawings overlap. But I'll show you that in a minute. So first, connect all of the columns that you want to use the effect to the over node by clicking from the column into one of the sources. And as soon as you do, it creates a new source below there. And I'll delete the direct connection to the X sheet. And then again, from Mandy into source two, and you see a source three created up there. And delete the direct connection, and the character disappears here. And then I'll connect Grim into source three. And just move that down there, and delete that direct connection. And then I connect the over node into the outline node that we created earlier that has the correct outline settings that we want for these characters. And then we can connect the outline node into the X sheet. And notice as soon as I do, all the characters appear back and they've all got the line thickness, the outline around the outside of them, even though there's only one instance of the outline node. And as there's only one effect, you can change the settings by selecting the outline node and then changing, say, the thickness. And that thickness will be applied to all three columns because they're connected through this single over node. Oh, and I mentioned overlapping drawings in columns earlier. And this is really important to understand with these layer blending nodes because some of them redefine the stacking order of the columns. So instead of the columns stacking the drawings in the order of the timeline, they'll stack in the order that they're plugged in to this blending node. So source one sits in front of source two, which sits in front of source three. So to show you, if I use the animate tool here and then put Billy in front of Mandy. So I just move Billy over here. So now he's in front of Mandy, as you might expect, but he's shown in front of her, not because of the order on the timeline, but because Billy is plugged into the over node higher up than Mandy. So if you swap the input order of this node, the stacking will change. And you might do this by deleting these connecting lines and then plugging Mandy into the first source, Billy into the second, and Grim into the third. And now you can see Mandy is at the front because Mandy is connected at the top there, but that's a bit fiddly to do. So here's another tip for you. For nodes that have multiple inputs that do the same thing, you can drag and drop the red triangle input onto another one to reorder them. So if I click and drag the triangle that Mandy is connected into and then drag it downwards and then release, it swaps the Billy and Mandy columns over, which is a really quick way to replace the inputs in a different order if you get the ordering wrong. And now because Billy is connected into a higher source node than Mandy, Billy appears in front. So by using a layer blending node, like the over node, as I've done here, it's a really handy way to group multiple columns and then pipe that output into the input of a single effect node. But this only works here for this one scene. What if you want to use the same settings for this kind of effect in another scene or in another project? Number five. So this final tip is a way to save your settings to use in another scene or in another project, which is really useful to keep consistency across projects, especially if you're working on an animated series or using scenes for different shots for the same animation. So let's get straight to it. So put simply, 
you set up your effect node with the settings that you want to share, as I've done here for Grim. And then you just right click on the node and then choose save as preset. And that pops up this dialogue here. So just enter a name for this preset, perhaps detailing the type of effect you're using, like it's a close up or a, a mid or distant blur, or name it after the character or show so you can recognize it later. For this one, I'll call it Grim Adventures Outline. So I know which show it's for. And then press save. And then when I need to use this outline style, I just right click and choose to add an outline as we did before. So insert effect down to tunes level and then down to outline. But instead of outline being shown as a single effect here, it's now shown as a folder with the default outline settings being shown at the top here with a dot next to it and my new outline definition sitting below it. So if I add this, it'll add an outline effect node set up with the stored values. So if I select it, you'll see the thickness is still set to seven pixels. So you'll see that Billy has the same outline effect style as we chose before. And we can do the same for Mandy. So we'll right click, insert effect, tunes level in the outline section, choose Grim Adventures outline. And again, that adds a seven pixel outline already set up onto the Mandy column. And this is great once you've decided on your settings. However, this doesn't link the settings from one effect to another. It just creates the node with the same initial settings that it was saved with. But this is a great way to just drop an effect into your animation that you know works how you like it. So before I tell you about my next video, I just want to thank all my amazing supporters over on Patreon with special thanks to Maria and to Robert. Your support really helps everything I do here on the channel. And don't forget, all my Tea Mug and Teapot supporters can download this project right now from Patreon. So after seeing some of the effect shortcuts that I've shared today, you might now be thinking, what if I've got a few effects working together? And how can I save those to use in another scene? And how can I simplify how they look here in the schematic? Well, yes you can, and that's exactly what I'll cover next week. And when that's out, you'll see a link to it just here. But in the meantime, I'll share another useful video that I know will help you with the effects. And that's a guarantee.